thanks for watching. Now, I want to touch base with you guys a little bit more on uh, Mystery School Volume 3. I want to thank uh, everybody who took the time to watch it and purchase the uh, video or download it. Um, yeah, it's a really deep video. We got into a lot of consciousness. We really got into a lot uh, about the Egyptian uh, gods and the understanding of uh, how they pertain to us. Now, again, what you're starting to see when I get into a lot of these videos is how everything really deals with consciousness. As I talked about in the video, we talked about consciousness, creating energy, energy, creating, you know, atoms and the elements necessary to create matter. So everything really starts with consciousness. And when you just go back, I uh, think about uh, everything I talked about as far as the dream world and the dream state and how your subconscious is running everything and how our subconscious is being controlled to bring about the reality that we live in today. And it's getting even more evident, you know, as we can see. And you can also see that they are not scared anymore to really talk about this stuff. And, you know, we see so many movies that is coming out that has uh, really getting into consciousness. I mean, old movies and new movies as well. When you look at the uh, the movie um, with Doctor Strange, uh, Doctor Strange, a lot of people uh, know about that whole comic book and um, the whole Marvel uh, Doctor Strange. I got a lot of emails from people when the movie came out, you know, you know, asked me that I see it. And um, I finally I seen it on the way over here, on the flight over here to Sweden. I watched it on the plane for the first time. And yeah, you know, it, it just blew me away. You know, what they gave away in that video. And, and you know, it's just stuff that they really, um, you, you see in books that they've been talking about for years. But, um, you know, when you do your research and then you see it validated on the screen and you see people with, you know, with great minds and people who really into this esoteric knowledge, you know, put it there for you on the screen. You know, it just blows you away. It validates, you know, your research and it um, gives you clues and insight into the knowledge of, you know, the um, power structure, you know, the powers that be. But, um, yeah, here in Sweden, been here for a few days now. I've been running around, been in London, uh, Stockholm here in, in Lulia, Sweden right now. And, um taking care of some business, seeing some people and, um, you know, really working on uh, building this huge, huge empire that I got coming up. A lot of big things coming up that I want to get into. I talked about in the beginning of um, the last video I put on YouTube about how uh, YouTube is basically not showing all my content. And um, what's happening, I talked about this before, they are regulating the Internet. For anybody who has a YouTube channel that monetizes their channel, what YouTube has done, YouTube now is not going to monetize videos that they see as not being fit for the public. So now YouTube can basically say your video is not fit for the public to see. So we're not going to monetize it. We're not going to pay you or give you money for your video. And now what they're going to do is they're going to force people uh, truthers, people who put out information, they're going to force people to really choose what to put out. You can either put out the truth and not make no money, or you can put out what they feel is uh, fit for the public and make some money. And they can't really uh, tell you what to put up. They can't really take down what you put up because it violates you know, your First Amendment rights. Uh, it violates a lot of things, actually. Uh, but when you enter into the agreement with uh, Google, you kind of forfeit a lot of rights that you have, and you basically have to deal with them as you know on their terms. So they have the right to basically refuse to show uh, your videos to you know your entire audience, and that's basically what we're going to see. I figured out a way around this that I'm going to get into later on down the road. That I'm going to talk about it's a huge big deal, a thing that I'm trying to do, and I'm gonna get into it later on. But you know, I just want to let you guys know they are censoring content. And anybody who has a channel who puts up videos who watch my channel, you see it. You see what's going on. If you notice, some of my videos now have been taken down, and they can take it down saying that it doesn't fit what their basically criteria, just to make a long story short, their criteria of what the public should see. So whatever that law that I spoke about before that was passed, they passed it and they could basically um, uh, take down whatever they want to take down and not show, you know, your audience, you know, your entire work. So this is what they're doing. And um, we're going to see this a lot. And they're going to use that law to basically um, 
uh, show what they want to show. You know, if they don't want you to put something out, it won't be out. So I want to get into, uh, you know, part three of Mystery School a little bit more in consciousness because we went in on that DVD. Now, with controlling someone's consciousness, with controlling consciousness, this really deals with fear. Fear is the main way to do it, which is why we have been surrounded with fear. Everybody right now is fearful of what Donald Trump may do. And again, you know, unless you are paying attention, you probably will, you know, fall victim to this whole charade of Donald Trump. What's happening would have happened with anybody. It doesn't matter Trump or what have you. It just makes it more believable with Donald Trump because, you know, he's a buffoon. You know, he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. And that's the illusion that they put out. This man doesn't make billions of dollars being an idiot. He knows what he's doing. So, you know, obviously he's a puppet. So the illusion that this man doesn't know what he's doing and he's going to get us in trouble is conjuring the fear. And they are just planting the seeds of what they want our consciousness to bring forth, which is a war. So again, when I talk about with meditation and dealing with your fears, that's one of the main reasons why I talk about that because fear is manifested. Fear, when you have it inside you and you're not really dealing with it, it will manifest, especially if it's something really serious. You can't really push down a fear that you have to deal with you know, on a daily basis. It will manifest. Your worst fear will come true if you have to confront that fear every day and instead of you confronting it you run from it it will come you know to fruition it will manifest itself so this is what they're using is fear and they have been driving everything based on fear and when you pay attention to um the narrative now you know they are really really putting out a lot of information as far as consciousness because now they can't hide it the cover-up is you know too many people know about it. Not to mention you had people meditating, you know, since the 60s and 70s, a lot of people was into it. When you go back further than that with the uh, yogis and with the uh, Hindus and everybody, the Buddhists, everybody was really into meditation in the ancient world because that's basically, you know, what was going on, what they was using. There was no prayer or anything like that. Meditation is what you find throughout the ancient world when you start looking for a religion. You're not going to find a religion. You're going to find meditation. You're going to find uh, people uh, talking about consciousness, talking about raising their energy, talking about nature. And they know they can't avoid it because now we're in the information age and everybody is studying up and everybody is seeing what's going on. Again, you're going to have those people who fall victim to the prophecies of the Bible, thinking that it's the Bible that's bringing these things into fruition, not realizing that it is an agenda that was placed in the Bible. And, um, you know, they are fulfilling what they wrote down. It is to confuse people, not just that, to, you know, bring more fear, to get people to manifest the kind of reality that they want. It all goes back to consciousness. Fear is how you control it. They are using us to manifest the reality that they want. It's just that simple. It sounds crazy to a lot of people when you don't understand how this stuff works. But as I break it down in my videos, you know, you can see clearly, you know, what's being done and how they're doing it. And the kind of control that they have on us. So now why fear? Because fear is what triggers people to do what they are supposed to do. Fear brings everything to the forefront. When a lot of people backed into corners, you know, because of fear, they come out swinging. You know, they rise to the occasion because of fear. You know, fear triggers the uh, norepinephrine hormone, the fight or flight hormone. When you are scared, when you are fearful, a lot of people fight for their life. Fear brings out a lot. You, you don't know what you're capable of doing until you are put in a position uh, to have to do it. You know, for fear brings it out. A lot of people are best under pressure. A lot of people, you know, they have a test the next day and they know they haven't studied all week and they cram and they end up passing the test, you know, because they cram, you know, with such a, a dire situation that they really went hard for it and knew how important that information was to retain in order to pass. So fear is major. A lot of people underestimate the power of it and how it can be used against you, how it can be used to manipulate you. And we have been seeing it for years, for decades. It is fear that they are using, as I keep saying, to basically uh, bring about this reality that we have been seeing. A lot of people, we all do things out of fear. You work 
because you fear uh, homelessness. You fear not, you know, being able to eat and support your family or what have you. And we are we don't really understand that we are put in a position uh, to do these things. You know, we are put in a position to have to really worry about fear. And a lot of people don't understand how this is so unfair that our society is based off a system that uses fear. And we are fear of we are fearful of so much, which is why, um, you know, our society is the way that it is, because we act out of fear and um, they know how to use it uh, against us. So, again, when you think about how the consciousness works, how your subconscious works and how it pushes things to the forefront uh, for you to deal with. Again, when I talk when I'm talking about meditation and how the subconscious is constantly trying to get you to deal with something in the dream state. Uh, something that's happening in your real life, you have to deal with it, deal with it on this, uh, in this dream world, deal with it, understand it. And then, you know, when you come back to your conscious self, you can understand what you need to do in your regular everyday life to deal with this fear that your subconscious keeps manifesting in a dream state or within meditation. So now when you look at it on a bigger scope of things, and the reason why your subconscious wants you to deal with it, because it's going to manifest eventually. When you look at it on a bigger scoop, if we are all fearful of this coming war, you know, fearful of what Trump may do, and we keep, you know, suppressing this fear, thinking that, well, oh, well, it's not going to happen. Or, um, you know, the people won't allow it to happen. The government won't do this. Or they're not going to attack America, mighty America. And, you know, we're not really confronting this fear. We're not dealing with it, you know, consciously, subconsciously. The whole world is dealing with this fear. You know, everybody is dealing with it subconsciously. We are dealing with this situation, but we are not really dealing with it. You know, physically, it's just a mental thing. We talk about it on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook or what have you. But we are not actively engaging in doing something with this manifestation, with this uh, subconscious thought, with these emotions. So when you look at it on the dream state, you have your subconscious mind telling you to do something as far, you know, take care of your bill, something small that you can handle. You understand that you can do that physically. Go pay your bills, take care of those problems, boom, it's over with. But when we have this large fear as a people, that we have been dealing with, not just with Trump, but with so many different situations and we have seen the worst, you know, um, it's going to keep happening. It's going to keep manifesting because we can't come together as a people and collectively deal with the situation. A lot of the times we wait till it's too late. You know, we call it a procrastination. And a lot of people, they know they got to get up and do something. And they wait till the last minute. Then that fear kicks in like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Let me hurry up and get ready to run be late for work. I know I should have left like a half an hour ago. So now I'm rushing because I'm fear, fearful of being late to work, that I'm moving fast. You know, it's with a sense of urgency at the last minute. But you have plenty of time to get up and go and do what you were supposed to do. But now that's getting close to that time. You really passed the mark when you should have left. It's a rush. It's a panic. So you're going fast. Everything is moving fast. You're driving fast. What have you. You probably end up making it to work on time out of fear. You know, we do things like this. A lot of people wait till they back into a corner to to execute the right plan, to do what they are supposed to do, you know. And it's fear that triggers that thought to go ahead and do what I need to do. And um this is where we are being pushed to. We have been pushed there so many times and again, we're in a situation where the bad guy keeps winning. And we're not understanding that the bad guy always wins. In every situation, every scenario, they win. We are losing and they leave us with a situation that we think we got the best possible outcome. But we basically went along with the agenda, with what they just fulfilled. And it's going to be the same here. Only now, you know, the stakes are so high of what could possibly happen as far as a third world war, an attack on North Korea or what have you. Um, you know, this could create a huge problem for everybody. Now, again, you know, consciously, we understand the ramifications of war. And then you got to think about people who don't really want to fight with Trump, fight for Trump or fight in any kind of war. It may be a draft. We don't know. It's a lot that's coming and a lot of um, 
energy, a lot of emotions that's being drawn up. And I get a lot of questions. I'm getting a lot of questions from a lot of people. We was talking about it here in Sweden. I mean, these people here are smart. They get it. They know. As soon as I got here, uh, what a lot of people we start talking about is how America bombed Syria. And they just knew already. You know, people just understand what's going on already in Europe. And it's like America is the only country don't they don't want to admit that it's the boogeyman, that America is the bad guy. And a lot of people don't want to admit that because we're so patriotic. But when you get over here to Europe, everybody know. Everybody understands what's going on. And a lot of people are not blinded by the whole situation. A lot of people said exactly the common sense thing that you would ask yourself is, uh, why would Assad, you know, attack his own people? It just doesn't make sense. So again, they have been controlling us consciously, using our subconscious to do so. And uh, we are so distracted by so many things in America that we are not really seeing what's going on. I mean, the kind of stuff I see that's posted on the timeline is just like, you know, do people understand what's going on? The stupid stuff that people post. It's just crazy. And there's a lot of serious stuff going on that um, we're going to see. Who knows what's going to happen? Like, we... We really got to pay attention to this. And a lot of people got to really uh, not fear it, but uh, really educate people and think deeply about the situation and a positive outcome. Because um, if people don't start seeing this recurring cycle that we've been seeing, you know, for decades, they're going to keep doing the same thing. It just seems like everything is good. Everything is fine. Next thing you know, boom, something happens without warning. You just see it on the news. They are not discussing their agenda with us. We, it's just going to happen. But before it happened, everybody was sitting around worried about maybe something might happen. You know, everything seems a little bit too quiet right now. What's going on over there? Then all of a sudden, you know, boom, something happens. Trump drops big ass bomb. What is that all about? I mean, it's 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 really crazy. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people are, are going to be shocked of um, what's what's possibly what could possibly happen from this whole situation. So. Uh, again, my whole thing is America is the only way. America is the key to stopping all this. And um, we, don't, we are the only ones who can stop it. And it's just the way it is. And we're so distracted and so confused and confronted with so many different issues that a lot of people, you know, it's far from a lot of people's mind, uh, you know, of what we can do to stop this, you know, to even one believe that we have the power to do so. So there's a lot of distractions in the newspaper, a lot of different things, you know, coming up, people dying, people killing themselves, the whole shooting with the Facebook guy. So many things is happening, so many different distractions. Meanwhile, if we really understood how serious the situation is, you know, it's like we, we standing on a track, we walking down the track and a train is coming, but we too busy talking about something stupid to step off the track. And, you know, sooner or later, we gonna all get hit. And it's like, how dumb can you be? You see the damn train coming. Get off the track. And we're just too busy talking and playing around. And this is what's going on with America. We're too busy joking around and playing around and worrying about stupid stuff instead of stepping off the track and avoiding the situation. You know, and this is what's, what's happening. We got to look and see how we're being played, you know, on a conscious level. And how our subconscious is being manipulated to, uh, to you know, help their agenda come to fruition. So now my point in saying all that is to get people to understand why, you know, we can sit around and, you know, watch the playoffs and worry about baseball, worry about, you know, um, sports, what have you, worry about entertainment. You know, we go about our lives regardless. You got to pay bills. You got to take care of your children or what have you. And, you know, people, we just want to live our life and have fun. Meanwhile, while we're doing that, there still is this lingering emotion in the background of fear of what could possibly happen. Even though I may not, you know, push yourself out on the forefront to where you can consciously see it or feel it. When you, when it's possible on the news, that emotion comes over you. You feel like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? When you see it on your timeline, when you see it on Twitter, YouTube, or what have you, you know, that fear still comes over you. A lot of people just won't even watch the videos. A lot of people will change the channel, won't even watch the news when they start talking about this stuff. But a lot of people are becoming fearful. A lot of people just try to ignore it, not deal with it, and just go about the rest of their life. And this is exactly the path they put us on, the situation they put us in to do so. 
A lot of people don't want to confront death. They don't want to confront their fears. Anytime you got a situation where you can just walk away from your fears and go do something fun that you enjoy, majority of the people is going to do that. And that's why they gave us these things to do so we can walk away from, you know, these fears and not deal with them. And this is what this is what America is doing. We are not dealing with the problem. We have never dealt with it. We are not confronting the issues. You know, you get so many people who just don't want to talk about race. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about politics. They don't want to talk about religion. A lot of people, oh my God, they're talking about politics and religion. I got to leave the room. And we've all been through that before. And it's like, how could you not want to talk about this stuff? This is everything. 